All right, so we just got access to this wonderful program. There is a web application called Vernier Video Analysis. It is a slightly more modern version of an old program called Video Analysis that you might be familiar with. Um, if you're not familiar with it, that's totally fine. Um, we're just going to start like no one's ever seen it before. Um, when you open the app, um, what we're going to do is we're going to import a video. This is all based on video. You'll notice here that you can choose your own file or you can choose some of the preloaded ones. So I'm going to start with the basketball shot. This is sort of a classic one here. Um, and what we're going to do is I am going to show you how you can very simply uh, take this video and turn it into data and analyze it and, and students can uh, you know, interpret the data, do labs in this way. Uh, not only is this great for virtual learning, but it's actually a great tool when we're in the classroom normally. Um, so let me just show you a quick demo of how this can work. There's a lot more you can do with this. I just want to show you the quick and dirty introduction to it. So first thing I always like to do is play the video uh, all the way through. So you can see this, this person here just shoots a basketball through the air. And there's a couple of really important things about the way they shot this video. One, it's of pretty good quality. And the frame rate makes sense. You don't have a lot of blurring of the basketball. You'll see that in just a moment. So let's go back to the beginning. The first thing you want to do when you do video analysis is you need to set the scale of your video. Right now, all the computer knows is that I've got a bunch of pixels. We need to tell it what that is in real units. So you'll notice that there's a meter stick on the bottom here. I'm going to drag this scale tool down here. Oop, I wasn't quite on the end. I want to get it exactly or as close to exact on that one meter that I can. So 258 pixels, that's 1.0 meters, which is excellent. You also see I have my Y and X axis here. Um, we're going to leave that right at 90 degrees um, like it showed up when we popped up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to advance the video until the ball is just about to leave this person's hand. There we go. Or it's already left his hand. That'll work. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to click on the basketball as it makes its way through the video shot. Now, what's important here is we want to do the leading edge of the ball in case there's any motion blur from the camera. And the other thing which can be tricky is to try to click on the same part of the basketball at all times. So I'm going to try to click on this sort of bottom right hand corner and I'm going to talk as I do it. Now, there are something like 50 or so odd frames. I'm going to try to click through and talk while I'm clicking. Now, how you click is really important because that is essentially your data. Any errors in clicking are going to lead to errors in your actual analysis. So I'm trying to continue to click in the same spot on the ball. Of course, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but that's okay. You, you can see on the right hand side, by the way, as I'm clicking, that there is a graph that's being automatically populated. And you can see that it's the X and Y position versus time. Now, what's cool about this app is it, it can take the video and figure out what the frame rate is, which is part of how it can calculate things like velocity and then later on acceleration. So I'm clicking, I'm clicking. This part's a little tedious. Now, of course, if I did like a high frame rate, like a 240 uh, uh, frame rate slow motion video, I'd have a lot more frames here. Um, which is only really appropriate if you've got something moving super fast. This ball is moving at an appropriate speed. You can see I'm not really getting too much motion blur. Once we get to the bottom of this arc, you'll see the ball will start to blur a little bit more, which is fine. I'm still clicking on the leading edge. I'm getting those lovely graphs, and I'm almost done. A couple more clicks. There are more features that I'm not showing you right now. I just wanted to generate this graph. Last click. Boom. Awesome. Now, if I come up here, I can toggle what's displayed on the screen. So I'm going to intentionally um, get rid of that, that table at the bottom. Let me just show you what it generated for us. So it generated a data set that we can label and rename and all that kind of stuff. The video is still here with all of the dots. And then I've got these two beautiful graphs. So I'm going to get rid of my data table and just show you these graphs. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see. Now, right here, I have two graphs being plotted at once. If I wanted, I could do something like two graphs and I could make the bottom, you know, the top graph is just the X position and or just the Y position and the bottom is just the X position, for example, Oops, clicking all these off. And so I can compare X and Y. I can also, for example, let's say we just care about the ball moving up and down. I've got my Y position on top. Let's make this bottom part the Y velocity. What's nice about this 
is that we can actually analyze this data. So, you know, uh, qualitatively, we can see we have a nice looking parabola, um, but I can do something pretty neat called a curve fit. So it defaults to linear, but there's a bunch of options. We know this should be quadratic. So I do quadratic. You can see you've got a nice fit and it will even give us some data here, like the root mean squared error and some other things like that. We can talk about interpreting that data in just a bit. Oopsie doodle. Uh, on this one, we the thing we really care about here is this um, the slope of this graph. This is y velocity plotted against time, and we can do uh, another curve fit. This time it, it should be nice and linear. So let's click on, come on, there we go, apply curve fit. And you can see I've got a nice linear fit. We know that that slope should come out to something like negative 9.8, and of course it didn't. Uh, you can think about a couple reasons why that might have happened. It has to do with scaling, how well you've clicked, and things like that. Um, but that's just a quick and dirty rundown of, of what you can see. The last thing I wanted to show you in the last moments here is that you can actually export these graphs or export these graphs. So for example, um, if I wanted to export, let's take a moment, uh, you know, this graph, it will do it as a PNG, which is a, a just a photo that you can, uh, for example, students could turn in this nice, lovely graph. You can change a bunch of the options. So there's your quick introduction. Um, I'm going to try to push more of this out because I've done a lot of this in the past with students. Please do let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.